What's up, guys? It's George the, Fra it's George the Fragrance Apprentice here. 2019. Pretty good year. I've certainly had worse, certainly had better. But it was definitely a big year for me wearing fragrances. I wore a tremendous amount of new fragrances that I had never, ever come across. Brands that had already been established, brand new fragrances. It was a very, very big year for me, fragrance-wise, and it was a huge year for my collection. So if you haven't seen my 2018 list, um, my most worn 2018, which I released yesterday, you can go check that out because there are spoilers ahead. Last year, my number one fragrance that I wore was Oud Wood. It was unquestionable. You could see the level of the bottle. It was preposterous, the amount that I used of it. This year, Oud Wood isn't even on the list. Now, I did wear Oud Wood. There's no question of that. But there have just been so many new and interesting fragrances that I've wanted to wear and, and experiment with, and, and, and I've loved it all. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be probably quite new, but at the same time, you will definitely um, recognize quite a few of these fragrances because I have mentioned them throughout the year. But if you're wanting to know how much I wore them, well, this is it. So let's crack into it with number 10. Number 10, now don't misunderstand what's what's going on here. My number 10 is SM Cafe, and that is from Strangers. I've worn a tremendous amount of fragrance um, this year, so the fact that it's even in this list is, is something that's quite incredible. But I could imagine that some people probably thought that this might be higher up on the list. But the only problem with SM Cafe is that it's really, really quite a, a heady and coffee-laced fragrance. And I've had a lot of... Um, a lot of business meetings, a lot of social events this year, so I haven't been able to wear SM Cafe maybe as much as I would have liked. But I'm starting to wearing it, wear it a lot more now that we're getting into the winter months. This is probably going to turn up on my winter list, hopefully. But yes, SM Cafe is number 10. Number 9 is from the House of Parfums de Mali, which is a fragrance I never thought that I'd be uttering in a most worn list. I've had my ups and downs with Parfums de Mali, but Herod, yes, has been phenomenal for me. I've been wearing it a lot, a lot, a lot, um, especially in these past couple of months. I've just really sort of gelled with it. I've really connected with it. I think that it's a great fragrance. I think that it's good. I, I have my problems, but I, you know, I said that in the review and you can watch all of that, but the numbers don't lie and I have been enjoying this a lot. Number eight is probably the shocker, the upset of the list. This is Millicent Imperial by Creed. Now, don't go thinking, oh God, George hates Millicent Imperial. No, I don't hate it. I love it. And that's what happens. You love it so much, you know that it's always got your back and you don't actually have to wear it that much because I wanted to explore new fragrances this summer. I wanted to, you know, get connected with other new creators, other new perfumiers and all that kind of stuff. But Millicent Imperial is always going to be there for me and I'm always going to be there for it. It is still my favorite. It never won't be my favorite. But I just didn't need to, I didn't need to wear it as much this year because I just know how good it is, you know, and I get it. Number seven, number seven. Now, this is Zerjoff 400. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Oh dear God, this is something special. This is something I'll be talking about a lot. Just look at the bottle for, for goodness sake, right? For goodness sake. When I walk into the studio sometimes and I actually see this bottle, I'm like, oh my god, I actually own that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh my goodness, I actually own Zerjoff 400. It was, it was like a pipe dream for me for the last year or so. Especially when it, like, I was shown this when it first came out and I was like, wow, that is everything that I want in a fragrance right now. Absolutely everything that I want. And it was, yeah, it became like a pipe dream. Like, I can't really own that. It looks too good. It's so beautiful and posh and wonderful and and the bottle is out of this world it's one of the most beautifully crafted bottles i've ever seen i can't own that and the scent and the everything about it is just it's luxurious it's it's a statement piece it's a fashion statement really it's a statement piece that says yo i i'm i've got a i've got a zerge off but i haven't just got any zerge off i've got 400 join the club but it isn't i don't just like it because of that that's nice as well but Everything about this is an absolute beast. The fragrance itself is mesmerizing, very beautiful. Just everything that I want, like I said, in a fragrance right now at this part of my journey. 
The bottle is a beast. Everything is just perfect. The performance, a beast. Everything about it is just incredible. I will be talking about this a lot more and of course do a review and this will most definitely be on my winter list. Number six is from the house of Maison Francis Cojan. This is Aqua Universalis Forte. This is my number two, I believe, this summer. Yeah, I just love it. I just absolutely connect with it. I think that it's such a refreshing, a refreshing beautiful, balanced, uh, citrus floral fragrance. It just has a real art to it and a real perfectionism to it. It's incredible. I'm actually going to Vegas. I'm going to be living in Vegas with Timmy in January. And one of my biggest and grandest memories of this fragrance, where I really actually started to capture it and understand where it was coming from and how I really, really connected with it and wanted to just wear it all the time, was when I was in Los Angeles pitching a feature film. And so I'm going to be in Vegas, I'm going to catch a flight to LA hopefully and do a review of this. But it's just phenomenal, it's one of the greatest summer light citrus uh, hot weather based fragrances of all time because it's all of those elements perfected and turned into something very magical and, and, and something that's so simple but yet so absolutely perfect and well calculated by Francis Kojan. You know, he does have a reputation as sometimes being a bit of a genius, sometimes he's not a genius and he can really, really get it wrong, but sometimes he truly can be, and this is a masterclass in perfumery. Number five is from the house of Christian Dior. This is Dior Homme. I've come back to it again. There are certain fragrances in my collection where I'll go out of love with it and I'll be like, no, not this year, I'm not really feeling it this year, and then I'll go back to it and I'll go, oh yes, 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 I want to. I want to be with you this year, you know, and that has been Duron. The Duron has actually sort of taken over Fev's spot a little bit. Fev's actually been a bit under fire because it's had this fragrance and another fragrance really on its back. I still love Fev, uh, and I have worn it, but Fev, is, Fev Delicious is not on this list, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to tell you that it's not, because I've had this and I've had another fragrance that's been working off the back of it. Again, still have all the love for Fev, but when I want to go out and I want to entertain the women of my life and, you know, connect with them, I have very specific fragrances that I like to wear. And this year it's actually been this and uh, another fragrance that's coming up, but it's a masterpiece, it's a masterclass, goes absolutely perfect with what I'm wearing. Dior Homme is amazing. Number four <laughs> is a fragrance. Uh, <laughs> number <laughs> Good. God, this fragrance has almost become a meme, especially with uh, the fact that I'm going to be going and seeing uh, Chris literally in a couple of days. In fact, literally tomorrow, uh, I'm, I'm seeing Chris. I better edit this out fast. Uh, yeah, and we're going to be going, and I've bought a very special whiskey for the occasion. And yeah, well, I've given it away now. My fourth most worn fragrance this year has been Angel Men Pure Malt. Again, I've come back to it, but I've been wearing it so, so much, a ridiculous amount. Uh, I'm, I'm just loving it and I can get to a point where I'm just wearing it and I'm like, oh good god, I need more of it, I need more of it because it's just so easy and straightforward and simple to wear. You can see right here, um, I should maybe show you on the cutaway, but I have used a ginormous amount of it. That, for me, for a fragrance collector with 200 bottles, that is an insane amount uh, of fragrance to have been used. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's quite something. So, Angel Men Pure Malt, uh, Chris, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I probably have already seen you at this point. I hope we had a good time, and I hope that we didn't get too drunk. I hope that we got drunk, but not too drunk. Number three is from the House of Strangers Perfumes. This is gonna be a surprise to literally nobody. This is Salted Green Mango. I wore this so, so much in the summertime along with uh, Aqua Universalis Forte. Just so easy to wear, just so enjoyable to wear. Yeah, it's just incredible. I think that it's it's one of the best fragrance, uh, I can't give that away. It's one of the best fragrance releases of, of, of this year, easily, easily. Um, it's just completely compelling and brilliant and straightforward. This was on my top 10 intermediate list. And this was the fragrance that I, I would say to people, if you want to get into niche, you want to see what niche can do, you know, you, you want to see what, 
fragrance perfumiers who treat this more as an art form rather than just a commodity or a business, uh, then one of the your first ports of call should be Solid Green Mango by Strangers Parfums, which is led by Prin, who I genuinely believe after this year of this incredible mesmerizing and original releases from him that he's genuinely a genius. Number two is from the house of Rainier. Again, this probably won't be too much of a surprise to many people. This is Kisses Rain. I just got it this year. I just totally, totally got it. And I mean, this really was my, my awesome number one because I just fell into it and I've been wearing it. And this is again, the fragrance that has kind of toppled Fev issues in a way. I still love Fev, you know that, but this is my go-to if I'm going out, if I'm seeing friends, if I'm, you know, wanting to go on a date or something like that, or if I'm trying to like impress a girl or whoever it is. Uh, yeah, I'll be wearing Kisses Rain and not just that, I mean it's not just for that purpose, it, just in general I've really, really, really enjoyed wearing it. And I think that's down to the fact that also it's, it's changed and the oil concentration's gone up. The discount code for Kisses Rain is still available, I think that's going to be available until the end of the year or January definitely at least. Um, and that's TFA15, if you want to buy this fragrance you can with 15% off using my discount code. Uh, Renier has done that for us and that's of course ridiculously kind. But yeah, it's what, what more can I tell you, I've loved this fragrance since day one and now that things have changed with it and the oil concentration is different, it's the best version of Kisses Rain. So Number one is an... Uh, man, number one is... <laughs> You will not get it. <laughs> you won't. Don't even try. Because I do, I wouldn't have. I was thinking about this list, and I was thinking, what is my, what is the Fragrance Apprentice's most worn fragrance of 2019? And it took me like a minute to figure it out. And when I figured it out, I was like, oh God, it's not that, is it? I thought, yeah, I know I like that, but and I was like, yeah, I wore this thing all the freaking time because it's so easy to wear. And I just want to say something here. Most worn doesn't necessarily mean the best. I'm not downplaying this fragrance, by the way, I'm not. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best and it's it's the fragrance that I've thought, oh my God, that's the best thing this year. It's not my best release. Um, th those will be separate videos. But it is my most worn because it was the easiest to wear. It was the fragrance that I thought, okay, I'm just gonna get good reactions. I'm gonna wear this and it's gonna be casual and it's gonna smell pleasant and it's gonna smell good. And this fragrance absolutely nailed that. This was the fragrance this year that I was like, I want people to like what I'm wearing, I want to enjoy what I'm wearing, and I want it to be absolutely perfect. It is from the house of Ioko 1954. It's Mirage Sodding 23. It's an Aventus Club. No, I, don't know. <laughs> I was on call with um, Manny and Victor, and Victor was saying to me like, What's that, uh, what's that Aventus clone that you like? And I was like, I don't like Aventus clones. What are you talking about? I was like, no, the Italian one, the Italian Aventus. I was like, Mirage 23. I was like, that's not really an Aventus clone. It's like, it is, it is. I'm like, Shut up, Victor. But I call it the Italian Aventus. And the reason why I call it that, look how much I've used of it. I've got this in April, by the way, at Essence. That's, that's a huge, that's a ginormous amount. I'm not even kidding. That's the most, it is. That's the whole freaking point of the list. This is my most worn fragrance. And I think that um, the Aventus comparison is there at the beginning, but then it becomes like an, a, an Italian style, Neroli based Aqua de Palma like fragrance. It transitions into that. And so for me, it just had the best of both worlds where it was recognizable, it was likable, but it also had this class and sophistication that was really endearing and really fun and just simple to wear. And that's the biggest thing that I could say about this. It is simple and easy to wear. So yes, this is, could have fooled me, but yes it is, it's Mirage 23. That is my most worn fragrance in 2019. Anyway, I hope that you got the information that you wanted. I hope this video helped you out in some way. Quite an interesting list, and it's completely, all, I think there's only two fragrances that survived from last year, so it's been quite an interesting comparison. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Like, leave a lovely comment down below, and if you are new to this channel, I'm uploading almost every single day at the moment, so please subscribe because you will get consistent 
fragrance content. Anyway, I'm the Fragrance Press. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.